Pain is something I'm very, very familiar with. I think we all are as humans. I mean, pain, what is that? The opposite of happiness? They're almost the same emotion, but just on different sides of the spectrum. And you raise a really good point. We're not alone in this. However, I thought I was alone for most of my life. I thought a lot of the experiences that I had growing up, especially, I was the only person going through that. I didn't really have anyone to talk to. I didn't really have a support system. I was kind of by myself for the first, I don't know, you know, 20, 25 years of my life. Hello and welcome to The Ally Show. My name is Ali Aslamifar and I'm your host for the show. We are in our episode number four, where we are chatting with Mike Knowles. I originally met Mike during a management training program at Hired. We both used to work there. And we kept a friendship and conversations even after that. Today's conversation has been recorded about three months ago. And as I was editing this episode, I really wanted to start this conversation with thanking Mike. This very friendly conversation really helped me to unlock a couple of things that I was stuck with in my life. Uh, Number one was the fact that I've been going back and forth a lot with like different therapists and really seeing and getting the push from Mike in this conversation about how therapy has been helping him gave me another boost to take therapy even more seriously. And two, because He, as we will talk in this episode, he is a gym expert and his encouragement about taking gym seriously got me into even take the gym activity that I was already doing more seriously. And I've been actually so happy with my life these days as I was able to also like keep that commitment about continuously going to do some gym activity. So this all goes... uh, to say thank you, Mike, for really showing up in this episode and having this amazing conversation with us. During this conversation, we talk with Mike about his story of pain around a physical experience he had while he was playing soccer professionally and how he came back from that experience. If this story is a sensitive topic to you, please skip this episode. And we hope to see you in our other episodes on The Ally Show. Also, if you're suffering from any mental health issues, please contact your medical or mental health experts. Mike is a revenue operation expert by day. He has a master from Duke University in engineering management. He's also a former professional soccer player, which we'll hear more about it in our episode. Mike has been on a journey towards better mental health for the past year. He has been using health, fitness, soccer, entrepreneurship, meditation, and personal finance as a way to better connect with his mind and body. Mike's accountability campaign is about doing a physical activity on a daily basis. The links to that campaign is in our show notes. Now, without further ado, let's start this conversation with Mike. We're live. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. Uh, Welcome to the Ally Show. Today we have Mike Knowles with us, if I pronounce your last name correctly. Hot on, better than a lot of... uh... A lot of pronunciations I've heard. Ha- had to do my homework, man. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I know Mike from uh, Hired. It's interesting we met in this management training program. Uh, he was on the sales and revenue side of the world and I was on the product, but we met there for the first time and we actually started talking about things completely non-work related, one being mental health. So today... We have the honor to have Mike with us. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, and let's do this. And I, I'll pass it to you to have your introduction however you want it. Cool. I'm excited. The honor is mine, by the way. 
Hey everybody, I'm Mike. Like Ali said, we met through work and we just got to know each other. Uh, we didn't really talk about work stuff too much. It was just stuff outside of work, just life and how we've been and, you know, what we've been up to, what we like doing, etc. So I'm happy to be here to give you an intro on myself, to give you the backstory of where I come from. My story doesn't start in America. It actually starts outside of America. So my mom, she is an immigrant from Lebanon. She came to America in the 90s. There was a big civil war going on at the time. A lot of just chaos, upheaval. And she decided to come uh, to Washington, D.C. with um, her entire family, her siblings, her, her mom. They all came together to the States for a better life. And my dad came from another part of the world, uh, from Bolivia, of all places, um, to America. You know, not bad things are going on at the time there. Um, hyperinflation, I mean, political instability, you name it. So he came over with uh, his siblings, his parents um, to America for a better life. And in 1995, I, I came out the womb. That's where my story begins. Uh, I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area in the suburbs in, in Fairfax County. Um, I had a pretty normal life growing up, I would say. Um, I have a younger brother. Um, you know, I played soccer when I was a kid. Um, I had some friends growing up. Um, even though... My parents might have not had all the money in the world. It never seemed that way to me. I always ate. I always had clothes. You know, we were always doing things with the, you know, the extended family, my cousins, my aunts, uncles. So it was a pretty normal life growing up, I'd say. Um, we did our best. Um, I ended up playing soccer super competitively. I mean, I used to travel at least every other weekend, maybe once a month to different states for tournaments. Uh, I even played in Spain. I went to Spain to travel for 10 days, Spain and Portugal to play in a soccer tournament. So um, a lot of my teammates now or my ex-teammates, they either play professionally right now or they played at very big D1 schools. I ended up getting injured and I can get more into that. So I never really got to live out my dreams um, back then. So... The soccer thing didn't work out. I ended up going to um, undergrad at a very, very small school in Ohio called Marietta College. I studied, of all the things you can study, I probably chose the most random thing. I, ch I studied uh, petroleum engineering. Super out there. I don't even do that in my line of work. I, I don't, I'm not even in that industry. So I studied that for four years. I played soccer there. Uh, it was a D3 school. I played soccer. Um, and then I graduated four years later. I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. I don't think the oil and gas industry was... It was in a really bad spot back then. I mean, people were getting laid off. There were no jobs. I couldn't even find an internship while I was in school. So it was tough. That made me decide to go to grad school. So I spent a year at Duke doing a program for engineering students and ex-engineers who wanted to get into business. So I did that for a year. I met some really great people there. And I ended up going to a startup uh, when I graduated. And this was a very early, you know, like seed stage startup. It, it was actually a German-based company that had Everybody was pretty much in Europe, in Germany. They had a few people in the United States. Um, that was my first job. Uh, it was a grind. I mean, it was a startup. I mean, you had to wear so many different hats. I liked it at first because it was so entrepreneurial. Um, my family, like a lot of them, they own businesses. So my mom has her own business. My 
cousins do, some of my aunts and uncles do. So for me, like it just felt so natural. But then I kept working. I kept grinding over the next few years and my my just my drive, my purpose kind of dwindled, I would say over time. I ended up getting so burnt out working in tech over the past four and a half years that I don't know. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in life. It came to a point where I just didn't really want to keep working in tech because it just wasn't making me happy. It wasn't giving me any purpose. It wasn't fulfilling me at all. So uh, I'm taking some time off right now. It's been good. I've been in the gym. I've been really working on my my fitness, my my diet. I've been playing soccer again, reconnecting with friends, spending time with them, reconnecting with my faith, spending time with my my family more, understanding or like really trying to figure out what I want to do in life. Um, so it's been a roller coaster and like happy to dive into those points, man. Like I'm just happy, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Mike. No, this this was a great intro and I relate to this story in too many ways. First of all, immigrants, family, hey, high five. Also, I know for little, we spoke a little bit Arabic that I know <laughs> in, in one yeah. of our last meetings. Uh, and then um, it's it's also like very interesting the way that uh, your story, uh, I don't want to uh, ruin too much of the soccer story, but even further down the road, like going to petroleum uh, engineering program and then not really feeling it in yeah. the end, going to business, trying to really make it your own way, trying tech for a few years and now rethinking the whole thing. Like that's, that's the story of my life as well. Like I, I really connect to it. There are some interesting points. I'm trying to understand how you think about like all these changes like in in perspective now after many years observing this uh how does it feel like like just standing right here seeing and looking at your journey how does it feel like it's overwhelming i mean <laughs> it's a lot it's life. i mean life is tough man you, you just you don't realize that when you're growing up when you're a kid even when you're in school even your first few years working a, a corporate job i mean you don't realize all the ups and downs you've been through man i've been through a lot of pain a lot of through happiness i mean it's just like a roller coaster like you said so many ups but so many downs and whatever comes up must come down and then whatever is down i mean the only way is up so it's just it's like that it's gonna be like that for the rest of my life you know um I'm going to have so many ups, but I'm also going to have a lot of downs. So it's, it's a lot, it's, it's easier talking about it with people and talking through it and just being very, um, reflective of your experiences. Um, just really thinking about it and just, I don't know, just being very self-aware of what's happened in your life and understanding it's fine that you've been through all the stuff because everyone has, I mean, that's part of being human. I mean, you go through so many different emotions. It's a roller coaster ride, this life that we live, man. It came up a couple of times in our previous discussions too. It's like when there is def when you see it down, like when you feel that like, okay, today or like this is stage of the life I'm at, like is the downest it can be. At that exact moment, you only see up. Like you admitting that okay, the reality is this moment or this situation is not okay and this it's painful. Like that understanding and that, that observation boosts your awareness at, at the same time that, okay, things are not good, how to survive it and how to take a really good next step to fix things or to be okay with the situation. And just being okay with that situation takes you places. So it's really interesting it uh, and uh, I, I really also like admire the fact that you're such open person with uh, your stories and uh, just talking. And I think 
this it's really important to have people like you in our communities to be honest because more people need to talk more people need to speak up and just speak up their stories um because this is opening up a space for everyone else to also know that they can speak up and yeah. they're not alone like that fact that they're not alone this is the main reason that this show exists to tell people uh that we are all in it together so i love that without without saying too much there i, I want to switch the gears and kind of like go deeper into uh your story and your relationship with pain and mental health and I'm going to pass it back to you again. Pain is something I'm very very familiar with. I think we all are as humans. I mean, pain, what is that? The opposite of happiness? You know, they're very they're very very uh related. They're almost the same emotion but just on different sides of the spectrum and You raise a really good point. We're not alone in this. However, I thought I was alone for most of my life. I thought a lot of the experiences that I had growing up, especially, I was the only person going through that. I didn't really have anyone to talk to. I didn't really have a support system. I was kind of by myself for the first, I don't know, you know, 20, 25 years of my life. So I think my first real experience of pain where that comes from back when I was so to set the stage back when I was you know in middle school I was 12 13 14 I used to play soccer I mean extremely competitively it didn't start out like that I used to just play for fun but then I joined a travel team and we ended up playing against other teams in the area it progressed to playing against other teams in other states it even progressed to playing teams um internationally in mexico canada i even was spent you know like 10 days in spain and portugal playing against other teams so i was really serious about soccer i mean that was my life every day i'd be thinking about soccer i'm in school i'm doing something soccer's on my mind like I'm watching it on TV. I'm talking to talking about it with friends. I'm thinking about it like I'm practicing, I'm training, you know, four or five days a week with my team. I have games every weekend. Like that was my life. That was all that I was good at. That was seriously the thing that kept me going uh when I was younger, when I was a teen because I wasn't the best at school. I wasn't the best socially. I didn't really have that many hobbies outside of soccer. That was pretty much my life. So, it was all I had at the time. And when I was around 15, I started feeling some kind of discomfort in my lower legs. Whenever I'd run, I'd feel my legs really tighten up and they'd get super stiff and I I thought at first it was I don't know like shin splints it was cramps in my muscles I thought it was something that was not that serious I thought it was a normal thing at first but it turns out you know I kept playing through that pain and eventually I got to the point where I would run for 5 minutes in a game and my legs they would swell up so bad to the point where they became rocks and i i couldn't run after 5 minutes i i had to sit down and i couldn't do anything uh it turns out you know i went to a lot of doctors it turns out that i had a uh, compartment syndrome in my lower legs so normally you have some kind of you have tissue there that expands during exercise to allow for blood flow oxygen you know all the normal the good stuff that needs to happen but when you have compartment syndrome that tissue is so rigid it doesn't allow for any blood flow or oxygen so the legs they they get really stiff and you you can't exercise you can't do anything so i i had that happen to me when i was 15 and i i had plans to you know want to go pro one day 
play at a very big D1 school, a lot of my teammates, they, my ex-teammates, they play or have played professionally in the States, overseas, in Europe. I have, I mean, so many of my friends, they, I mean, almost all of them have played at, at big D1 schools even. And I couldn't do any of that. Um, I never had the chance to. When I was 15, I mean, I had that from 15 to 18. I still have it. It's very mild now, but it really messed me up. Um, I felt really alone at the time. I didn't really have much support. My parents, uh, they weren't really there. I mean, they're immigrant parents, you know, they're not the best with emotions, you know, they're not the best with that kind of stuff. So they were very distant. I didn't really have many friends at all who I could talk to or who could relate to what I was going through. It was really just me, myself and I, and probably my dog, you know, like my dog was always there, which is why I love him so much. He was one of the few people that were there during that time. I mean, it was so hard because it was the one thing I loved doing. And all of a sudden, I couldn't do it anymore. I even had a surgery done. I saw at least a dozen doctors. Some of them actually told me that there's no chance you're ever going to play soccer again, especially competitively. You're not going to go to college and play soccer. I spent so many hours doing physical therapy, going, you know, getting my legs massaged, thinking that, you know, this, all this stuff was going to help, but it, none of it helped. None of it helped. And it was so random. Just, I kept, you know, at one point I kind of gave up my senior year of high school. I mean, I was 18. I essentially I did give up, I think. A lot of me gave up. I quit my travel soccer team because I wasn't really playing in the games. I There was no point. I kind of stopped playing soccer for a few months. I went from playing every day to just not playing at all. I quit for a few months. And I mean, randomly, like, I don't know why, but I had this urge to, to say, nah, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I can't, I can't, like, I'm going to regret this if I, if I end up quitting. I can't just quit. So day by day, I would just push myself and I would go to, you know, a soccer field by myself. I would do sprints. I would play with the ball. I would do all these drills that I used to do. And I would just, each day, each week, I could do more and more and more without my legs hurting. And it got to a point where I could actually start playing in games now. I wasn't 100%. I was maybe like 50, 60%. But for me, that was good enough. I could actually play, which is why I, I wanted that so bad. So I ended up playing my senior year in high school. And I ended up playing D3 soccer. Uh, I played in college for a few years. I not only played, I was, I started most of the games in the season. I was a very, I was doing very well for myself, you know? Um, but it, I mean, it was tough. I mean, that, those three years from a 15 to 18, not being able to play soccer, just going through all that stuff by myself, that really, I mean, that shook me. That messed me up so bad emotionally. I didn't really have anyone there. That was my first, I think, real taste of real excruciating rock bottom pain that I've felt in my life. I still feel that pain from back then to this very day. I mean, it for a kid for 15, 16 year old to go through that, it's, I mean, it changes your life. I mean, it made me mature so much. It gave me a different perspective on life. It made me appreciate things a lot more as a kid. So, I mean, that, that was my first real experience of pain, man. That's the first, you know, the first scar I think is the, 
the deepest because I still think about those days some days. I, I do, I do, you know, I still talk to people about it. My therapist, you know, I still, it comes up day to day. Some days, no, not much, but other days it does. It can, it can really just, it brings me back to that pain and it just, it hurts, you know. As we grow up, we, we become more aware of the possibility that we can be hurt uh, physically and we are going to lose some of our abilities when we are at this age or we, we, can, we cannot be as fast when we are running, when we are at this. Like there are some like default, uh, at least known, I'm not going to say fact because I've seen like seven-year-old folks like running so fast and I'm amazed by it. But there are things that are we are more accepting of, of them and there's less expectation of our body. Whereas for you as a kid, like 15-year-old, like it's like as you, you at that age, you will run as fast as you can in your life. Oh, yeah. I was a runner too. I was, I was also like on the soccer team. I know exactly those days. Like you know you're running the fastest okay. in your life. And for you in that highlight of your age, dealing with that, I cannot even imagine how it's been. And then the story, I think the story of you coming back to the field is very encouraging. And I want to go uh, back to that urge and where that came from. But before that, I think it would be a miss if I don't ask you, like all that pain, all that emotional pain that came from that story how did you deal with it and how did you over the last few years, you're saying that you're still yeah. even going to therapy and talking to that, talking about those stories. I, I'm wondering like how, how could you manage that pain over the years and how it's been so far? You know, looking back at it now, I did not do a good job managing all that pain and trauma throughout the past 10, 12 years of my life. I, what I did was I bottled all that pain and trauma up. I put it in a box and that box was, you know, mostly shut, but just like a little bit, part of it was open just by like a little bit. And that little bit of openness, I think it seeped into my life throughout the last 10 years, you know, into my adulthood, into the, the present day, it just, it wasn't a good impact, obviously, you know, it, it impacted me negatively having bottled it up. I mean, I was very resentful. Um, I was never fully happy. There was always some sense of regret, anger, frustration, all these negative emotions they seeped into my life and I carried those emotions with me through all my relationships, through uh, my professional work, my hobbies, you know, my personality really. Um, it wasn't until the past year, maybe two years or so that I really started dealing with all these emotions and I mean, over the past 10 years, I've picked up so many additional traumas and so much more pain that it all just it kept piling up. It just kept piling up. The box was full. Like, the box could not hold all this pain and trauma anymore. The lid just completely shattered. It exploded at some point. It wasn't until the past year that I really started healing and getting better. I think a lot of it had to do with finally going to see a therapist about it and talking through it with someone who was willing to listen, who is willing to be there. And really just being conscious and being reflective of all the pain that I've gone through and not just ignoring it and bottling up bottling it all up pretty much just going picking up the box 
opening up the box and going through all of it. Everything inside the box, one by one, day by day, and just making sense of all of it and finally confronting it, I think. I think that's how I've been able to really go through all this pain and still be okay and still kind of, you know, push myself and try to be the best version of myself, just confronting it, going through therapy, being so open. You you made a point earlier, you know, you thanked me for being so open and being willing to share my experiences. I think 10 years ago or even five years ago, I probably wouldn't have been doing this. So it just goes to show how much I've changed and how much I've grown and my mindset, my perspective has shifted so much because of the pain. I mean, the pain is starting to go away. You know, I, I can say that very confidently because I'm dealing with it now. And I've got people like yourself, you know, the audience, I've got therapists, I've got friends, I have family who I can talk through this stuff openly. So it's for me, man, that's, that's the best way to deal with it. I think just being open, putting yourself out there and just confronting it. That's very amazing to hear that last year has been the year for you to go deeper. It takes time. It takes a lot of the effort that you called out, like just being open, taking the step, whether it's by going to the therapy or by being open to your trusted friends or not necessarily friends, trusted people who would be willing to listen to your stories. This process of saying things and sharing our stories and hearing them back, I've been, I, I know, like, of course, I'm not the a psychology expert here and the psychology expert might be telling me yes we told you that uh, but the reality is like it's consistently to me the best way to realize where I'm standing in life realize where I can do better even if at the same time that I'm at the same time that I'm sharing my story I have a lot of insecurities coming in with all that uncomfortableness there is still a lot to gain from it. So I like this is this is a piece I really take from this part of what you said that that openness, like we have to take that a step and we cannot just sit back. And if we feel that we are sitting back, it's okay. Maybe there is a time for it, but let's be also hopeful that that day is coming that we should still we should prep ourselves to open up find those allies in our lives that can start listening to us, pushing us through the path that we can be listened to. Where do you think that urge came from? In your story, you mentioned at 18, there was that urge coming up. You started like going back to the field by yourself. I, I, I could just visualize it and I feel like that's a very interesting part of your story. I want to know more about it. At that point, man, uh, I mean, the courage, I, I don't know where it came from. I think I have some ideas of where it came from, but I remember when I was 18, when I had given up soccer, well, I wasn't, I hadn't, I hadn't played in a few months, you know? And I remember I used to wake up at 6 a.m. on some weekends and I would just go to the field by my house by myself. I'd have my cleats with me, a few water bottles, some cones and a soccer ball, and that was it. I, I, I did that. I probably, like anyone would have told you, anyone, you know, doctors have told me like, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work, but I still, I still did it. Um, I think that a lot of that courage that probably comes from my parents, I would say. Uh, subconsciously, you know, I, I mean, I did not have the best relationship with them growing up. Not at all. I have a much better relationship with them right now, but as a kid, I did not. But subconsciously, I think I picked up a lot of the um, a lot of the lessons and a lot of the experiences they had. I mean, coming to a new country with no money, they didn't really even speak the language. They didn't have any connections, I think. Just knowing that they did that, and they worked jobs that they probably hated. They didn't want to do, you know, 
they probably didn't want to clean houses. They probably didn't want to work on cars. You know, they probably had better plans for them themselves and their lives. So I think just knowing that, just knowing that they, 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 they pushed through it, they did it. I think that gave me the courage uh, to do the same in my life uh, because it was very irrational. It didn't make any sense, you know. Doctors told me, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. I even told myself, you know, it's not going to work. It's not going to, it's not going to happen. But I did find that courage and I'm glad I, I did it because, you know, I ended up playing soccer in college. I ended up getting back to it and I'm just happy I gave it the shot, but it all comes from deep down inside. I think, you know, like you need to just take a chance. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't work out. You know, it's, it's fine. As long as I give it my best, if I give it my best shot, then I'm fine with the outcome. That's so encouraging. And it, it feels so real. And maybe that's why I was like, really curious. What's the motivation behind it? It's very interesting that th those moments in our lives that happen a lot, like we have, we have those moments where you got to give it up. That's it. Yeah. But, and it happens to a lot of us. Oh yeah. But there are moments where you can say, you just need to just push it one more time and suddenly things happen. Just, yeah. just knock that door one more time. Yes, of course, like it could hurt your body. And we are sitting here after the fact, we are like praising you for it. Like it could hurt your body. It could go one way or another. But I think like taking that shot, being confident that, and I think that subconscious moment that you mentioned, like being confident that, you know what? My parent went through probably something as bad as this or as hurtful as this. Maybe I can go. How's life right now? Like, just if we want to kind of like see, you started from that soccer story. Now you mentioned in the past year, you've been trying to uh, kind of like through therapy, through like having, being more aware of yourself. Uh, just curious, how's life right now? And where do you, where do you see yourself going from here? Yeah. Life. I mean, especially in the past few months has been pretty tough. I did hit that rock bottom back when I was, you know, 15, 16. But I think with life, I mean, it's a roller coaster, right? You hit rock bottom and the only way is up. So you go up, maybe it's like all curved and slopey. But I mean, for the past 10 years, my life was consistently going up in a straight line until the past few months I would say um, my girl and I were together for nine and a half years and we ended up splitting up I was at the heaviest I had been in my entire life I was not happy with how I looked I was not happy with my self image uh I hated how I looked in the mirror. I had a bad relationship with food. You know, I saw food as something you you eat to enjoy all the time and you, you kind of like try to conquer it. You know, you use it to kind of fill the gaps in your life. I was working a job that didn't fire me up. It did not get me excited. I was just going through the motions each day. I mean, there was no purpose in my life. I felt like I didn't know what my purpose was at least. 
uh, a few months ago, all of it just, I mean, at one time, losing your job, losing your relationship, not feeling good about yourself, like all these things just happened at one time. And I, I hit rock bottom a couple months ago for the second time in my life. So I don't think you hit it just one time. I think you hit it multiple times. I'll probably hit it again and again and again down the road. I'm sure I will. But I mean, I've... The good thing about hitting rock bottom is the only way is up. So over the past few months, uh, that the past few months, I've slowly been building myself back up. I mean, I'm getting to a point where I'm almost in the best shape of my life. I like how I look. I have a much better relationship with food. I've reconnected with my spiritual side that I haven't really connected with in over 10 years. I've got a much better relationship with my parents. I've been going to therapy consistently every week. I've been trying to pick up new hobbies. I'm picking up old ones again, like soccer. I've been playing in a soccer league with friends. I'm even thinking about doing like Muay Thai or MMA a few times a month, pushing myself, you know, like really putting myself out there. And just thinking about what I want to do, I think going all the way back to when I first started working my first job at a startup, I did it because I thought I was entrepreneurial. You know, it was in my blood. My mom runs her own business, aunts, uncles, cousins, they all do it. So I've really been thinking about what I want to do in life. And I, I think I know now that I do want to start my own business or my own businesses with friends, with family, or just doing it my, my own way and just being my own boss. I think that's really what I want to do in life. I'm still figuring it out. I don't really know what that looks like. I have some ideas, but it's not like fully fleshed out yet. So, I mean, I've got my whole life to figure that out, but I think that's what really gets me going and what, Gives me so much passion, just building stuff with my own hands, being my own boss and living my own life. And additionally, you know, I think what's really helped me over the past uh, few months to a year has been just financial literacy, I would say. I've been very savvy with investing a lot of my income, saving a lot of my income, being very smart about my spending habits, that's allowed me to just not worry so much about money because I think a lot of stress comes from money for everybody. You're going to stress so much when your kind of basic needs aren't met. If you're worrying about, oh, am I going to have enough money to pay rent? Am I going to have enough money to sustain myself if I get laid off? You know, I got laid off um, a month and a half ago and I'm fine because I built so many good habits with money. So I want to keep doing that. I want to get to a point where I'm financially independent so I can have a choice where money is not really too much of an issue. I can really just focus on being spiritual and doing things that I'm passionate about. So it's been a roller coaster ride. I hit rock bottom again but i'm slowly working my way up and i know for a fact it's not going to be the, the last time i hit rock bottom i know that so i'm cherishing the good moments that i'm starting to have right now knowing that at a point in time in my life it's going to come crashing down again that's just how life works so i'm really appreciating everything that's been in my life and all the experiences i've had over the past few months, man. Lesson learned from the market, man. Uh, speaking, speaking the financial language. Uh, I, I, I love. And by the way, thank you for all the details in this that you shared. I, I, I want to highlight a few points. What you mentioned about, like, we're gonna keep hitting the uh, rock bottom over and over. 
like just accepting that i think it just brings such peace in my head like every time i'm like at a bottom point of my life i'm like yep it's it's one of those it's going to go up again it's going to come yeah. down again and it this is it this is life this is how we keep learning for me of course there are tough moments i'm not going to dismiss those important rough moments in everyone's lives but um it's interesting to look at it this way too for those who who don't see mike like those big muscle guns i yes. i can attest like he's in amazing shape right now and like before this call event i'm like dude like what are you doing give me your program i, <laughs> I try i try to show show off but i'm like no way i can compete with this guy like uh, <laughs> it, it, it it's it's really amazing to see like how you've been able to change your relationship with your body which seems to be and just just observing your stories and hearing your stories you are you are the workout dude like you are someone who has a good relationship or who should have a very good relationship with his body you you're such amazing soccer player you do very well you you told me like you you lost a lot of weight during the past 4 months um and sounds like you're even trying to gain more athletic expertise which is which is very unique and then the third point i think is really interesting what you said about uh financial stability which doesn't come from working hard necessarily no. it comes from really having a plan having a thought knowing that how much money do i really need to be just doing what i'm doing all these days and stay healthy stay happy uh, do i really need to work this many hours like and that's that's how I'm like, why do I need to work in tech? Do I really need to work like 12 hours, 15 hours a day to just get paycheck one after another and I still don't own anything? <laughs> like, do I really need to do that? I can I can maybe lower my expectations, save some money here and there. And that that financial stability and financial plans in mind, it's really interesting. I'm curious actually. I really don't know if if you if you have something like this, but I'm curious yep. If you uh, summarize all your learnings, or if you're offering any consulting or anything for folks who are listening, in case if they want to reach out, oof, I should though, right? Right, <laughs> like I, I, I am client number one. If you don't, I'm client yeah, number one. <laughs> that's that's the beauty I think of just trying to figure out what you want to do and just pushing yourself. Because yes, I've built all these habits. I've kind of built these experiences i have like a decent resume if i wanted to be like a content creator or help people out or start my own podcast like even you are like i i had that option so you mentioned uh, you're going through a lot even right now what are some of your routines to keep your mental health up in general yeah, man, I've been doing a lot to try to keep my my mental health just as healthy as possible. Uh, I think the biggest thing is just establishing a routine with therapy. Um, every week, you know, I'm booking a session um, a week in advance, so I know exactly when that session's happening, what time. So it's just there. I don't really have to think about it. I'm just booking the next one. A week from now so that's been really good for me um having goals specific, i think if you set specific time bound goals for yourself it really pushes you and motivates you to just pick yourself up even if you're going through a lot of bad stuff in your life for me for example four months ago when i felt terrible about myself and i was at the heaviest in my life i set a goal i want to be X number of pounds by X month. Uh, like that really pushed me because it, first of all, like I had a goal in mind, like it's a tangible goal. Like I weigh myself every day. I see what I weigh on average per week, how that's trending over time. I can measure it. I know where I need to get to. And I have a deadline to achieve it by. So that just pushes me. I mean, that is informing all the decisions I've been making. Like if I want to eat out like really bad, it's, uh, you know, I have an urge to just 
eat fried chicken or something, you know, I tell myself, you know, my, well, my goal is, and I just, I don't, I don't do it because that's not going to help me get to my goal. So that, I mean, if you can set goals like that, it just keeps you busy. It keeps your mind kind of away from all the negative, but also, I mean, take time to reflect on all the negative and what's been happening with you. I mean, I've been starting to meditate a little bit um, at nighttime before I go to bed. I think that's just been really good for me. Just being so caught up in the present, just being in tune with the present, I think that's really helped. Uh, because sometimes my mind, well, not sometimes, a lot of the time, my mind drifts into the past and into the future. I mean, the past, uh, it's already kind of done. It's existed. It doesn't exist anymore. The future is just a figment of your imagination. It doesn't even exist. So, I mean, all we have is the present. And if I can find ways to just get more in tune with the present, I feel like I do better mentally. Like playing soccer uh, in a league. When I'm playing soccer, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm so in the present even with the gym, when I'm doing a workout, I'm so in the present. I'm not thinking about anything else. When I'm meditating, I'm in the present. When I'm with friends, I'm in the present. I mean, it's it's just finding ways to just be in the present. I think that's what's really helped me the most. And that's what's given me more of a, like a good routine to to push through, I think. That's amazing. It feels like you learned how to be mindful and you're applying it in any situation, whether it's playing soccer, being with friends, and of course, when you're doing meditation, which is all mindfulness, uh, at least the goal of it. Uh, it, it feels like it, it's, it's such a liberating moment when you, when you know you have that, when you know you've been able to be mindful with your friends, when you're even hanging out with them drinking something yeah. having a dinner like just just talking like living the moment with them rather than trying to worry about what's what's going to happen to the market what what happened in the past yeah. how much loss i had here or what happened to my relationship like really living the moment and learning how to be mindful that's a skill and how how do you see the relationship of that with how you dealt with your relationship with your pain do you see any dots i'm not trying to force a dot i'm, I'm wondering if yeah. you see anything i think being more mindful for me i mean at least has helped me process that pain and not box it up and bottle it up so it's seeping into your everyday life i think being mindful has really forced me to confront the pain and make me realize it's okay to be hurt, to, you know, we're all going to be hurt. Like I said, I'm going to hit rock bottom again. Maybe in a year, maybe in a few years, maybe in 10, 20 years, I'm going to hit it again at some point. But being mindful and just living in the present has really allowed me to just cherish every single moment and every single experience in my life so I can enjoy right now because I know, you know, in the future it's, I'm going to go through hell again. I'm going to. I mean, it's just a fact. So just being mindful has really helped me process the pain and really kind of like prepare for the pain almost just by appreciating everything in my life, like right, right this second, right now. Here is one thing we are asking all of our guests to be an accountability partnership for five of our listeners. And if you want to pick an activity to do with five of our listeners for 30 days, it can be daily, it can be weekly, which which activity would you do with them to keep your mental health and their mental health up? Yeah, man, really like, that's amazing that you're doing that. It's not just a podcast you're doing, but you're doing, you're actually, you know, like allowing people to connect and hold each other accountable. I love that. I'm so down for that. You know, I go to the gym. I lift weights maybe four to five times a week for about like an hour, 50 minutes. 
and then I'm I'm doing cardio to lose a lot of the fat. And it's not even like, you don't even have to be a runner. You don't have to be super athletic. I'm just walking. Seriously, like walking is the best exercise. I've been walking like 10,000 steps a day, at least. Sometimes like 15 or 20,000 if I have extra time and motivation. I'd be down to hold others accountable if they're trying to change their lifestyle, if if they're trying to get more fit, if they're trying to lose weight. Like I can definitely hold other people accountable for that i'm holding myself accountable so awesome so we are holding you accountable to hold five people accountable uh to do a physical activity per day mainly gym activities or running if they want to join you even for walking and that's going to be for the duration of 30 days let's see if we can build some new lovely routines together with mike Any final thoughts, Any anything you want to share with the audience? I uh, would love to hear that before we close. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, by the way. like, I would not have done this 10 years ago or even five years ago. Like, I, was, I used to be very, very closed off to everybody, including myself. But I've, throughout the past year especially, I mean, just doing therapy, having friends, setting goals for myself, understanding what I want to do in life, really thinking about it. It's really helped me so much. So, I mean, you're not alone. That's the message I would say. I thought I was alone for most of my life. It turns out I am not. I mean, we barely know each other, but like you are someone I can confide in, you know, like we have that level of trust and we can hold each other accountable and we just connect so well. Um, if I can do that with you, man, I can do that with so many other people. I know other people are having the same experiences I am that you're having. We have so many shared experiences and emotions as humans. So, I mean, you're not alone. I think that's my main message. Just I'm here. You're here. So many people are there for you so just don't be shy open yourself up you never know what's going to happen you never know who you're going to meet who you're going to connect with just give it a shot that's it that's all i'll say that's amazing thank you so much mike and thank you everyone for tuning in have a good day mike cheers take it easy everybody That was our conversation with Mike Knowles. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as well. If you're interested to join his accountability campaign, please use the link in the show notes. Thank you again for all the support that you're bringing to this show. And I hope to see you in the next episodes of The Ally Show. Have a good day.